SpaceX is entering a new era of the Starship program. The next generation Block 3 vehicles, designed for full reusability, orbital refueling, and rapid turnaround, are now rolling out. Ongoing work at Starbase is setting the stage for Flight 12, the first Block 3 mission that could redefine Starship's future. Let's dive in. The first Block 3 Starship, Ship 39, is rapidly taking shape inside Mega Bay 2. Its common dome has now been joined with the previously stacked upper sections. Once the remaining tank sections are integrated, teams will move on to internal outfitting, routing hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, and avionics lines in preparation for cryogenic proof testing. Meanwhile, Booster 18 is advancing through assembly inside Mega Bay 1. Both its oxygen and methane tanks are complete and will soon be joined to form the first Block 3 booster. At the current pace, the booster is expected to undergo cryogenic proof testing first, followed by the ship, before proceeding to static fire campaigns. If schedules hold, testing could begin by late this year or early next, paving the way for a possible launch between January and February. Block 3 marks a major leap over Block 2, incorporating structural and performance upgrades informed by lessons from earlier flights. The booster now features an optimized propellant transfer tube, redesigned grid fins for better aerodynamic control, a fully integrated hot stage ring replacing the old inner stage, and a reinforced forward dome built to handle higher thermal and structural loads during stage separation. The ship, meanwhile, includes revamped plumbing for orbital propellant transfer and stronger catch fittings designed to lock securely into the tower arms. Both stages are powered by the Raptor 3, a next-generation engine offering higher thrust, improved combustion stability, superior cooling, and simplified plumbing for greater reliability. I've explained these upgrades in detail in earlier videos. Check out the links in the description for a deeper dive. While assembly of Block 3 hardware progresses, SpaceX is simultaneously dismantling and rebuilding Pad 1 to accommodate the new generation of vehicles. The existing orbital launch mount will be replaced by a redesigned version featuring a flame trench similar to the system at Pad 2. Work has already begun to remove the current OLM. Teams have marked cut lines on the ring to segment and lift it away piece by piece, while removing internal plumbing, electrical lines, and sensors in preparation for full disassembly. The launch tower is also undergoing a major overhaul. The massive drawworks cable system that raises and lowers the chopstick arms has been unreaved. A logical step considering it has endured years of mechanical stress from lifting and catching operations. Over time, repeated load cycles, tension fluctuations, and exposure to the coastal environment would have degraded the cable's integrity. Replacing it with new, higher-grade steel lines ensures safer and smoother operation for the heavier Block 3 vehicles. They may also replace the current 5-loop traveling block with a 7-loop configuration, similar to that used at Pad 2, to enhance lifting stability and operational speed. In parallel, SpaceX plans to shorten the chopstick arms themselves. Shorter arms will simplify control during lifting and stacking, reducing mechanical strain and allowing faster resets between launches. Their reduced length will also minimize bending moments and oscillations during mid-air catches, improving rigidity, response time, and structural lifespan. Engineers have already detached critical systems from the arms, including the hydraulic shock absorbers that cushion booster landings, the centering screw mechanisms that align the vehicle on the rails, and the ship lifting pins used during hoisting operations. Each of these components will eventually be replaced with upgraded systems compatible with the Block 3 vehicle design. Welded lifting lugs have been added to serve as crane anchor points, confirming that trimming operations are imminent. Once these modifications are complete, the tower will be better suited for repeated catch and stack cycles with less wear and faster turnaround times. Ground systems at Pad 1 are also being stripped and reconfigured. The berm wall separating the tank farm from the launch area is currently being demolished to make room for reconstruction. Documents from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers confirm that the berm will be replaced with a reinforced blast wall, similar to Pad 2's setup. In parallel, outdated pumps, heat exchangers, propellant lines, and auxiliary hardware are being removed from the tank farm in preparation for system upgrades. Several new pumps have already been installed near the propellant tanks, and additional replacements may follow depending on whether these are dedicated to Pad 2 or intended to support both launch sites. Only the large cryogenic storage tanks are expected to remain in place. 
the water-cooled steel plate system beneath the OLM will be removed and replaced with a proper flame trench, while the deluge system's capacity and discharge pressure will be upgraded to meet the cooling demands of the new setup. Teams have begun cutting and removing concrete around the deluge tanks as part of the ongoing upgrade phase. Collectively, these efforts will align Pad 1's ground infrastructure with SpaceX's latest safety and performance standards, paving the way for rapid, high-frequency Block 3 launches. While Pad 1 is being torn down, Pad 2 has nearly reached operational status. The primary propellant delivery hoses, which connect the booster quick disconnect to the methane and oxygen pipelines from the storage tanks, are now installed, marking one of the last major milestones for the mount. These flexible hoses are now undergoing retraction and extension tests to confirm smooth motion and proper sealing before the final BQD panel installation. The entire gantry is now shielded to protect cryogenic lines, hydraulics, and electrical systems from acoustic and thermal loads. Meanwhile, the flame trench deluge system has already undergone multiple test rounds since September, with engineers gradually increasing flow rate, pressure, and duration to validate system integrity and operational flexibility. The final test phase will involve simultaneous activation of both the flame diverter and launch mount water discharge systems, simulating full liftoff conditions. Recently, the chopstick arms were fitted with stabilizer rods that connect to the ship and booster during lifting operations to prevent swaying from wind or vibration. These were tested in synchronized motion sequences, confirming that the arms, stabilizers, and locking pins function together smoothly. The last major component pending installation is the ship quick disconnect arm, now in final assembly at the Sanchez site. Support hinges and attachment points are already being fitted to the tower to receive it. Once ready, Pad 2 will be fully equipped for the upcoming Block 3 campaign, starting with Flight 12. At the Kennedy Space Center, construction of a nearly identical Starship launch pad at LC-39A is accelerating. Following the installation of the flame diverter buckets a few weeks ago, and subsequent work to secure them within the trench, SpaceX teams installed the top ridge of the diverter system on Tuesday morning. This ridge distributes water from the storage tanks evenly into both deflector buckets, where it will then be sprayed outward during engine ignition to manage heat and acoustic energy. Attention has now shifted to the installation of the launch mount, whose core structure has been fully assembled at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility. The mount now incorporates most major subsystems, including internal plumbing, water-cooled steel plates on top, and other integral components. The entire assembly is expected to be lifted onto its designated support legs surrounding the flame trench in the coming days. Once secured in place, teams will move on to the remaining integration tasks, installing booster hold-down clamps, quick disconnect mechanisms, additional plumbing, and the propellant delivery lines that will complete the system. The ship QD arm for LC-39A, now nearing completion at Roberts Road, will soon be installed on the launch tower. NASA Spaceflight's cameras at SpaceX's McGregor Engine Development Facility recently captured three Raptor V3 engines en route to the test stand for acceptance hot fires. When Raptor 3 was first unveiled, United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno criticized its appearance, suggesting it looked incomplete. SpaceX responded by showing the engine firing in that exact configuration. Now, under the latest image from McGregor, Bruno again commented, asking to identify the thrust vector control actuators, servos, controllers, and electrical cabling, implying these systems were missing. SpaceX has repeatedly demonstrated that the configuration is fully functional, but since confusion persists, let's clarify this technically. Thrust vector control, or TVC, gimbals the engine to steer the rocket. Earlier systems used hydraulic actuators. Raptor 3 employs fully electric or electromechanical ones to reduce mass, uh, simplify plumbing, and improve responsiveness. Engines shipped to McGregor are configured for static fire testing, not vehicle integration, so large TVC actuators, servos, and other vehicle-side hardware are intentionally omitted. The setup isolates turbo machinery, combustion systems, and internal control loops for performance evaluation. Hence, if TVC hardware isn't visible, it doesn't mean the engine is incomplete, just that it's a fixed engine. Out of the 39 Raptor engines used on Starship, 23 are fixed and do not require gimballing so most engines naturally lack TVC systems during hot fire tests. As seen in test footage, SpaceX only installs TVC hardware when specific gimbal tests are scheduled. Raptor 3's clean look is no coincidence. It's the result of deep structural integration. 
Previously exposed valves, electrical harnesses, sensors, and plumbing lines are now built into the engine's main body, eliminating dozens of joints and fittings. This makes the engine lighter, easier to assemble, and more robust under extreme conditions, a key step toward rapid reusability and streamlined manufacturing. Earlier Raptors relied on protective panels and wraps to shield these parts from exhaust heating. Raptor 3 deletes those shields entirely to save mass, enclosing all vulnerable components within regeneratively cooled sections, where cryogenic propellants absorb and carry away heat before reaching the combustion chambers. After the space engineer on X illustrated this consolidation with notional diagrams, Bruno acknowledged that SpaceX's team had done a remarkable job simplifying and internalizing the fluid, pneumatic, and hydraulic systems within the engine's structure. Though he remained skeptical about the absence of visible electronics and electrical cabling, noting such systems are often shipped separately. In practice, those electronics and wiring likely follow the same internal routing philosophy, deleted external runs, fused into the primary structure through 3D printed integral channels and embedded within regeneratively cooled housings to survive extreme thermal loads. As with most advanced SpaceX designs, the exact architecture remains undisclosed, both due to ITAR export control restrictions and company confidentiality. Still, Raptor 3 has been repeatedly fired in the same configuration Bruno questioned, confirming that all required systems, electrical and otherwise, are indeed integrated, even if hidden from view. So, those missing parts aren't missing at all. They've been absorbed into the design itself. The result is a lighter, stronger, and higher performing engine that reflects SpaceX's relentless drive for refinement. What looks minimal on the outside conceals a masterpiece of integrated engineering, a level of elegance and efficiency few aerospace companies ever achieve. For a deeper look into Raptor 3's engineering and design evolution, check out my previous videos linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.